My lines, my lines. <laughs> Yay, we are live. Welcome everybody to Crossing Hi. the Streams. Welcome everybody. Crossing the Streams is the number one show in the entire world dedicated to talking about shows that you should be streaming. Collectively, we have 500 years of TV watching experience among us, and we're here to share our knowledge with you. As always, it's interactive. You can play along, comment, and uh, we'll put you up on the screen and talk to you. Don't be afraid to do that. In the means, But to kick it off, uh, like we do every week, our guest of the week, Tim, is going to sing the theme song. Here we go. Yeah. Here's the story of some lonely fellows who spend way too much time watching the TV. All of them have jobs and friends. Well, not really. Just between you and me. They made a live show out of their hobby. Every TV watcher's TV watching dream. Jeff and Ron and Sal and Bob. And there's Howard. They call it Crossing Streams. And then one day they went live on all the platforms. You could hear the people laugh and shout and scream. Da, 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 da. Still can't find another word that rhymes with platform. But man, we crossed the streams. We, we crossed, crossed the streams. We crossed the streams. The streams. That's, That's the way we do it. We crossed the streams. streams. Da, 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 da. That's that's a painful yeah. effort. <laughs> the, the sound quality is top notch when we all sing together. It's it's like watching that one show where they brought the cast of Hamilton together and they beautifully did that song all together. Almost. It's it's just Close. it's too much. Welcome to Crossing the Streams, everyone. We have an amazing guest today. You may know him as Tim By Siegel. <laughs> well, I hope you know me as that. I met him. Tim, tell everyone who you are. Well, I'm I'm Tim Bicegel. Hi, nice to meet you guys. No, uh, yeah, so I'm Tim. I'm the I'm the one of the hosts of uh, Funny Science Fiction podcast, and I host one on my own called Focused on Forward. Um, so, Focused on Forward, we talk about mental health and and uh, self help and things like that. And Funny Science Fiction, we talk to people all over the place, uh, all over uh, sci fi, superhero, and fantasy worlds um, about what they're doing, how they're doing, um, you know. And uh, we we try to be a little bit silly about it and have some fun and and it's just but you know three nerds sitting around laughing and, and telling jokes with each other so I see some similarities already. <laughs> <laughs> I was on Tim's podcast. I won a mug mm, and a book nice. because of my nice. geeky knowledge. I won that mug. I have that mug. And my wife said, "What do you think you're going to do with that mug?" I said, "Put it in my shelf." <laughs> oh, hey, well, there's oh. there's there's Zach's. He was on I also book. I also made mugs for Live from Detroit, the Jeff Dewaskin show. The podcast is taking. <laughs> it's big in Krakosia. <laughs> it's big. It's big. We got some fans. We got Lee here. Thanks for making it, Woo! Lee. Casey Ryan Plot is here. As a, yo, yo. Hello to you. As you know, we got. Um, <laughs> our goal is to try and convince Casey Ryan whenever he's around of the shows that we're talking about. Jerry. It's ready to drop, drop some TV bombs on us. Awesome. The, the, it does sound like a, a drinking song. It yeah. does, Lee. It absolutely does. So uh, we're excited. We're going to talk about lots of fun shows today. If you missed uh, last week's episode, which I know you what did, but in case you did, it, everything is live on, is on YouTube. Lot, uh, YouTube, just search the Jeff Duoskin Show on YouTube. Last week on episode 18. We talked about Last Chance You, which was about basketball, not football, which the image is. <laughs> the Falcon and the Soldier, Howard brilliantly took us through that. Uh, Bob, actually, Bob didn't talk about that. Bob left us. Anyway, we also talked about episodes. <laughs> we talked about episodes with our guests. Not going to see him Mar no more. Marcy Cozen. And then, you know, before we, <laughs> before we get oh. into it, if... Oh. Um, if uh, if you guessed he won't even be here, then you're a winner today. I'm so. telling you, always bet the under with Bob. Yeah, what was the under with Bob? It's zero, right? If your guess was he won't even show up, the uh, you are already winner tonight, and you win one of Tim's mugs. Um, we can work something out. We got some good Bye. stuff to good stuff today. 
in, in, in addition to the Netflix matrix metrics, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about the Sun Thunder Force, which Thunder is Force. Uh, Melissa McCarthy's new movie. And then we got uh, uh, the uh, what is this? The Golden Hour, which is uh, t talks about Stop. making Days of Thunder. Maru and Con Man. Our guest will be talking. Tim will be talking about Con Man. So that's nice. exciting. That's exciting. Ah. Hey, oh, by the way, just a real quick note on uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, it took a leap last week's episode. Oh yeah. Oh no yeah. No question. It ramped up. Pretty That's hard to shot. Dude, everybody's oh, yeah. talking about it. Everybody's yeah. talking about it. It's crazy. Well, Falcon, the, yeah, Falcon and the Soldier last week, the John Walker guy is, yeah, that was so good. So good. And the Flag Smasher woman is, mm -hmm. is one of my favorites in the show, too. Mm. They're Not teasing, the they're teasing, uh, just like with WandaVision, although this one apparently is much more real. They're teasing a cameo by a major actor, although yeah. they say the role is a minimal role. It'll be a major actor in that minimal role. So I'm pretty mm -hmm. excited to see who that is the next couple of weeks. I think it's Al Pacino, and he's he's doing his scent of a woman character. I have so many names. No. <laughs> I'm the power broker. That's uh, my Christopher Walken. I'm the uh, power you know how broker. much I would pay to see Christopher Walken walk out and say, I'm the power broker? I'm oh, my God. <laughs> Two mutants. <laughs> Which one am I? <laughs> Falcon. I don't like your stance. Yeah, <laughs> it's all wrong. It's wrong tone. <laughs> which which brings up one of the better podcasts, uh, the uh, Kevin Pollock walking podcast. Oh yeah, Kevin Pollock is a freaking genius. He does do the best. If you you can Google Kevin Pollock. Oh yeah, will, his will Christopher Walken. Yeah. His, right, his ladies, Alan Arkin ladies, is the best impression. Of we should. All. Oh guys, we forgot. We almost forgot. We're here to talk about shows, and it's time for the Netflix metric. <laughs> Yay! Take it All away, right. Wiseman. <laughs> okay. Ah, the Netflix metrics. Okay, so what I'm doing here is now it's kind of turned into a weird study as to how weird humans are, especially in the United States. And if you don't know what this is, there's a semi-new category on Netflix that showed up a couple months ago, and it is the top 10 in the U.S. And all this is is based on the metrics that are on yesterday's viewing. So whatever the most amount of Americans watch on Netflix yesterday is what i watched today and here's the crap that i get to uh, endure uh in this top 10 uh number 10 we still got that sniper ghost shooter which we talked about last time it is a garbage movie with billy zane uh not worth your time uh number nine jenny and georgia we talked about before number eight though is a weird one it is little rascals from 1994 directed by penelope uh spheris Spirit, yeah. uh yeah so this movie if you remember it was one of that big uh wave of movies when they were doing the old uh, uh, uh children's shows for black and white they were kind of remaking them into a new children's something uh the tagline of this and if you haven't seen this movie in a while it's very weird it is based on the old um you know, our gang, uh, you know, the, the tagline is Alfalfa is wooing Darla and his he-man woman hating friends attempt to sabotage the relationship. Um, yeah, this thing is very, very bad. It's it's just bad. Uh, I remember watching it before and being like, oh, yeah, okay, this is weird in 94. Uh, I don't know why this movie ever was made, but go revisiting it was really just a nightmare. It was not, not fun. Mm. Uh, but yeah, if you remember Little Rascals, whatever it is, I think it's geared for six-year-olds, so... Ugh. Unless you're six, don't watch it because there's actually better stuff if you're <laughs> six, like Coco, like Coco Melon. Uh, number seven is The Stand In, which is a pretty new movie that showed up on here. It's from 2020. It's been on the, the top 10 for two days now. It is, uh, it's written by Sam Bain, directed by Jamie Babbitt. It stars Drew Barrymore, and it's one of those weird things where Drew Barrymore plays two roles at once. Um, the basic yeah. premise is a stand in in the story uh, of a dis disaffected comedy actress who uh, her ambition stand in uh, starts trading places. So pretty much uh, the actress decides to walk away from Hollywood and her stand in who looks just like her, it, it takes over for her. And the thing is, I, I went into this movie because of the 
the commercials thinking it was a comedy. It, it's it's presented as a comedy. It looks like a comedy. It feels like it should be a comedy, but it is not. Uh, once I realized, and it took me about forty five minutes to realize that this was not a comedy. <laughs> it was a actually, a, it, yeah, it, it it was a tough one because the first half I was like. I see what you're trying to do here. It's not that great. But then I realized like, oh, it's actually a drama. <laughs> it's not supposed to be funny. Um, if, if you go into it like that, you might find something out of it. It was cool watching Drew uh, play two roles. Uh, she does a great job. It's just, uh, it, it's it's a fine uh, movie. Uh, yeah, it's The, the fine. good thing about uh, Drew Barrymore playing two roles is she can, er, uh, she can do just enough good acting in two roles to earn one paycheck. Hey, yeah, that's not nice. That's not nice. At all. No, like recently, Drew more. Yeah, recently Drew's been doing a pretty good job, and and like I said, the acting is fine. Uh, you also have um, who else is in this? You have uh, the, uh Michael Zegan, the guy from um, uh, Miss Maisel. He does a good job. It's it's just fine. Um, six is Coco Melon. This has been here for 173 days. I don't understand why kids are. It's it's not like there's new episodes. This whatever. Number five. Nikki, Ricky, Dicky, and Dawn. This huh. this offended me uh, <laughs> in the way that any Nickelodeon show for preteens should offend me. Uh, it's about an eleven year old kid named Nikki, uh, and also eleven year old Ricky, Dicky, and Dawn. Uh, sibling rivalries are heightened by the fact that they are quadruplets. It is awful uh it's corny it's cheesy it is uh predictable it is like if you know what a sweet life of zach and cody is uh take away everything that makes that show good and that's what you have it's just another one of those uh nickelodeon shows but obviously they, they, kids they, they took away ashley tisdale they took away ashley tisdale yeah which is pretty upsetting <laughs> there, there was something uh, not to be confused the, with ronnie and bobby cody. ricky and mike if i right <laughs> <laughs> this is i would watch me, that <laughs> yeah, this is let me know that uh, Netflix is only being watched by, I think, 11-year-olds, which is very weird. Um, four is The Serpent. We talked about that documentary. Three yep. is Who Killed Sarah. We talked about that show. Uh, that was the guest from last week's favorite show, which is pretty funny. Um, now, two. <sighs> It's not one of these ridiculous Netflix documentaries. It's called This is a Robbery, the World's Biggest Art Heist. It's been on here for six days now. Uh, it is about on March 18th, 1990. There are 13 works of art that were stolen from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston. Uh, I don't know why this has more than one episode. I don't know why there's four episodes. This is at best a half an hour documentary worth of information <laughs> that gets retread over and over. I don't know, man. The people like a good heist. Dude, th no, the heist is fine. Watch episode three. That's all you need. <laughs> episode three is the best, but what you get is like it, it, it starts, part of the original heist. It's very weird. Like it, it, So the beginning of it, the first 15 minutes, you're like, oh, this is cool. There's a lot of thrilling. It's a lot of surprises. Uh, it explains what's happening. Some things are really cool. But then it just kind of swerves into how the mafia works and how the mob works and like uh, how small time crooks can be suspects. And like even even the idea that art is love, like it goes through all of this weird stuff. And you're like, wait, what what's going on with this robbery? Like, that's all I really care about. Uh, I, I've watched uh, four hours of a uh, ridiculous documentary that really could have been boiled down to possibly a Wikipedia page. Wow. I, I wish. I feel like um, a lot of doc I feel like a lot of documentaries are like that. Like the the murder of the Mormons could have been like yeah. a, a could yeah. have been a pamphlet. I enjoyed it's the Mormon one, but yeah, I mean that could have been time well spent watching our iCarly Zach. So I am sorry for that. <laughs> <Okay>. Oh God. <laughs> no, I, I just want to be part of a heist. That's why I like that's why I like the last blockbuster, which even at 90 minutes could have been a 60 minute movie. Yep. And yeah, uh, but, but it, at it, least it, they didn't stretch it out too far. 90 is respectable. Yeah, uh, it just seems like any documentary that hits Netflix instead of just putting it out as a movie, which I don't think people want to watch documentary movies anymore. They want to watch a true crime series. The problem mm -hmm. is that they need to make it a series. And most of these new stuff, it's not worth series stuff. Uh, did, but did, did you watch the Hotel Cecil one? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that was One, that could have been shorter. That could have been shorter, but that was actually pretty good, though. I I, I enjoyed it. It was almost good. It was that. definitely yeah. good, but it was more about the idea which um, they kind of mass. But you're like, oh, this is really about web sluice, right? Yeah, and it's like, and, and that to me was fascinating. Like that could have been that could be a whole documentary. These people that go because that, that's like QAnon for the web. 
<laughs> yeah, it's the same thing as that uh, don't don't f with cats, where it's like just a bunch of people with a computer, but like I gotta figure this out. I I don't have a life. I don't have a collection. I need to get to the bottom of this video, uh, which is pretty much me in Marvel shows, by the way. Like that's that's me. If I may, oh, I was going to say Casey Ryan uh, plot is all about the robbery. He's convinced to watch only episode three. It three's it, uh, good. It just it just made me uh, remember Jeff and I uh, circa what 90, 91, went to see Dances with Wolves with uh, two girls we were friends with, and we came out of the movie and Jeff and I were stunned of what we had just seen, and we <laughs> said to the two girls, "We're like, what'd you guys think?" And one of the girls was like, "It was okay, but did they need all that detail?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was a point. You forgot the best part of that story, which is when we were, I think we were waiting in line, and someone in line is like, Ugh, can't believe this movie is like an hour and 72 minutes. <laughs> or, or what was it? It was something like that, right? Where they, yeah, they didn't yeah. really, it was 172 minutes. Yeah. It was <laughs> whatever, but they, I don't remember what it was, but they, they. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, Zach, yeah. what, what's number one? You left us hanging here. Yeah, number one, which we're going to talk about later, is Thunder Force. And I have some pretty oh, wow. strong opinions on that movie. Ooh, I can't wait to hear them later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you wait. Uh, we do have some comments on the little rascals. Is it an effort to read <laughs> child labor? <laughs> and so... <laughs> that's funny. I, mean, it's funny. Yeah, I don't was, even remember Little Rascals coming. I, out. I I thought that I did, but I, it kind of fell in with like the Little Giants and like all those like kid movies that were on the same time. Oh, but well, rewatching well, this, leave Little Giants. No, out of this. First that's of all, why the, the annexation of Puerto Rico. Play. No, Little Giants <laughs> is good, and that's why I thought Little. That's why I thought this movie was going to be. Yeah, it I was remembered as good. It's not. It was when they were remaking. Uh, they were, when they were remaking Brady Bunch, mm -hmm. Flintstones, Dennis the Menace. Live action, with, Dennis the, the original Manet, Brady Bunch movie with Leslie yeah. Nielsen. I mean, that was like, horrible. But the original yeah, Brady Bunch movie was amazing. That was, was great, good. and the second was one was good too. I thought actually. not too bad. They kind of like they got worse and worse and worse. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I'm probably the only one in this group who actually liked the Little Rascals movie. It's not oh, a wow. good movie. You're wrong. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> Zach, I'm, I'm a married man. I'm told often that I'm wrong. It's I'm yeah, okay with yeah. it. So. First of all, <laughs> you're not breaking new ground. The, 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 the girl who was Darla mm -hmm. was the best in that movie when she crushes that can. Man. That's like that's the best scene. And that's a great um that's a great um yeah. gif. That's a great gift. Oh, yeah. uh, oh, Sean Dustin from JFK to 9-11, everything is a rich man's trick documentary by Francis Richard Connolly. Mm. Oh. I'm, whatever Sean's smoking, I want some. All right. <laughs> is that one or two things? Was that two things? I don't, yeah, I don't know. Oh, hey. Uh, oh, we were just we were worried about you, Jason. Thanks for checking in. Or not. All right. Let me let me just re let me just recap that. Yeah. Call off the police. Call, Call off the police. back that APB now. Yeah. We got. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Uh oh, Jack. Casey Ryan Blatt liked uh, like the little rascals also. <laughs> he got differenter as differenter. <laughs> No, First right. of all, I mean, look at that cast went on to do. Okay, let's go on to the so next right. thing. Um, exactly. <laughs> all right, let's let's start with Maru. Maru, you, we're gonna Maru. make you believe in the impossible. You should believe in the impossible. So, so I, I'm always inspired by people who do amazing things because apparently I'm not one of them. So uh, I have to watch other people do amazing things. And and this film was made actually in 2015. And, and just as a, a mark of how impactful it was to me uh, six years ago, and I still think about this film all the time. Um, and for me, for a documentary, that, that means something to me, right? It's available on Amazon Prime. It was, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it was the best documentary uh, nominee for the 2016 Academy Awards. Uh, and it chronicles three mountain climbers and their obsession with summiting literally the toughest climb in the entire world. And this is a, a peak, uh, Miru, uh, in the Indian uh, Himalayas. And it's actually three peaks. And it's the middle peak. It's nicknamed the Shark Fin. 
that is the conundrum for climbers because uh, before uh, these guys climbed it in 2011, which is what the movie is about, this peak had never been summited, which is amazing when you consider all the people who've summited Mount Everest and K2 and all these other all these others. Um, it's actually way more dangerous, way more technically challenging than Mount Everest or, or K2 or Denali or any, any of these other ones. The, the problem with the climb and why the reason this, this documentary is so compelling is that it requires multiple climbing disciplines all on the same climb. You have to uh, not only have the disciplines, but you got to carry the equipment for each discipline uh, while you're doing it. So it's it's sheer rock climbing, which is its own thing. It's an ice ascent, and it's a, a traditional alpine climb. Uh, and it means essentially you're carrying each discipline equipment more than like 200 pounds of crap. You're you're lugging up a 22,000 foot peak. Right, the weather, as you might imagine, completely unpredictable in the Himalayas. It's it's occasionally deadly. People die all the time on this thing. There's no infrastructure. There's no base camps along the climb like there is on Mount Everest. Um, so this is a really very very difficult um, task for you to, to, to even attempt it. Um, the film was shot by a guy named Jimmy Chin. I don't know if you guys know who this is. Uh, Jimmy Chin gained like huge notoriety last year by producing uh, the Academy Award winning uh, film Free Solo. Did anyone see that on National Geographic? So Actually, was, yeah, I, I have, uh, yeah, Free Solo. I was going to mention Free Solo if you didn't yeah, bring it up. Yeah, so it's the same was, guy. That was El Capitan. Free, yes, now Free, exactly. Free Solo was the story of Alex uh, Honnold, uh, who is a completely insane dude and his attempt to scale El Capitan without any ropes or safety equipment, which is, I guess, the whole purpose of Free Solo. I don't understand it. I don't know why anyone would want to do such a thing. But Jimmy Chin um, was invited uh, because of his acumen to um, uh, support um, you know, Alex Honnold's attempt with this. And I think uh, Free Solo is an amazing show to watch. Anyway, Jimmy Chin himself is an alpinist and he's a mountain climber but the thing about him that is amazing is that he truly is a gifted photographer he's a gifted storyteller uh and the result is a absolutely visually stunning 90 minute ride on how these climbers overcame all the setbacks to make this make this possible it is impossible to watch this documentary without having a pit in your stomach the entire time it's it's gorgeously shot and edited it puts you in the shoes of these guys especially when it comes to taking really calculated risks like you're right there with them saying should do this or shouldn't shouldn't we do this um and, and for me, it, it's funny because I'm really into photography and Jimmy Chin has kind of like become like an icon for extreme photography. And um, I don't know if you guys are into like YouTube, but the, like the Masterclass series, uh, Jimmy Chin has uh, a couple down of, uh, of Masterclass uh, episodes you see on YouTube um, and on how he's able to shoot just amazingly impossible uh, images. Anyway, the story of Miru and the, and the way that these guys were able to scale it, um, a lot of what... Uh, they had to endure to make it happen. A lot of the setbacks, which they talk about, um, there's it, it's a super compelling story, and I highly, highly recommend this 90-minute watch on Amazon Prime. I don't remember. <clears throat> I don't remember if it was in Free Solo or it was a different thing that I was watching, or was it? It was focused on the people that filmed the people. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that should be a thing. I think it probably was in Free Solo, but like the people that filmed the people are doing it. And, are, and risking their lives, and these yeah. people die all the time. Like, I have to tell you, Free Solo. This is just me. I know it's a great film. Free Solo bothered me because it because I don't agree with the premise of Free Solo. It's just stupid to try and climb El Capitan with no ropes. It's well, just that's, more. It's, well, that's, it's that's more your wrong. opinion. That's, it is my opinion. And it's <laughs> it's a, there's a, it's a, there's people at home going, it's stupid that six guys are filming on the internet talking about shows. <laughs> I can just Google. <laughs> well, it's, it's listen. To use, to use a term that was said to me earlier, you couldn't be wronger. You couldn't be wronger. That's right. <laughs> uh, anyway, Miru, Miru is is really it's it is a beautifully shot documentary. And ninety minutes to Zach's point earlier, it's it's not too long. It is packed with what you're looking for to understand this. And uh, I absolutely loved it. So free, free solo was amazing. Let's see. Um, 
We got no, I, uh, Jer Jerry says, sounds like the toughest climb in the world is getting Zach. Only slightly less than that is the, is the climb yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Lee says, uh, get a grip, Ron. And then, uh, of course, Casey Ryan Plot, you glorious son of a bitch. You <laughs> um, blown away by the human capacity to achieve. Reconvinced. Reconvinced. Wow. <laughs> That's Thank amazing. you, Sarah. Yeah, I appreciate it. But like when you watch like Free Solo, which I don't know if they cover in that, when the the sheer strength, like in sheer solo, your if you fingers. think about think about just yeah. the tip of your fingers, the tip, he would sit there and do literal push-ups. I can't do a push-up with the full hands with both. <laughs> it, you're so right. And he Jeff. was like using the tips and probably not even his thumb, and, and then just doing it was like. But Crazy. the tips for him, like that, having that strength, that's life or death stuff. Like the ability to pull himself up by his fingertips, that's what keeps him alive in that in free solo. I know we're talking about free solo now. Well, so. but, but I think, but it's both. If you like one, check them both out. But like the interesting thing about free solo, which I bet has to be a common thread through these people that are climbing, they're their fear their fear mechanism is different than ours yeah they talk about that in free solo and they yeah. where they they don't get freaked out like we do and they as in the same way and that's how they're able to maintain themselves so yeah. i get that's, scared going up a ladder i can't imagine <laughs> I, yeah. do too, Tim. I can't do it I, maybe that's why yeah. i love these movies you know, so much. if i drop a pen I mean, i'm like i'll get a new pen having worked in you know in professional sports for as long as I did and just the ability to do things that, you know, like I can shoot a basketball, but to, to be around NBA players and, and see something to that extreme or, you know, the time I spend with NASCAR drivers and who are just casual, normal guys. And then they're getting in driving it literally inches from a wall with cars on all sides of them going, you know, close to, or faster than 200 miles an hour. It's just, yeah. it's, it's amazing to just have that, the ability to do things like that. Well, it's crazy. Well, it's I'd rather remember, shoot basketballs at mountain climb though. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, God. A little safer. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know where people, where that lives inside you. Like, I don't know how climbing a mountain and, and, Almost dying care. over and over and over again. I don't. I don't understand it either, Sally. Rare, rare, rare people, man. Yeah. Do you think the guy who does the finger push-ups? Do you think he has problems opening in pickle jars? Has to have somebody help him. <laughs> no, that's a good question. It's all thumb work. <clears throat> all thumb work. It is. I did. I did buy that thing on on the made for TV ads. The the clip thing that you can turn the <laughs> thing. Yeah. You just gotta hit it with a knife. I got yeah, I got one right. that uh, installs underneath a cabinet, and <laughs> right. then you can just hold oh, the jar cool. up and turn it inside. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty nice. Boy, we really like come on. Bucks I, I feel like we've learned a lot. We have learned a lot, but we're going to learn even more from Con Man because oh, boy. Convention Man doesn't sound as cool. All right, our buddy Tim is going to take us through Con Man it, and Tim. do his best to swat down any Zach Wiseman. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think this is something that Zach might actually like. Uh, so it's, it's a really, it's like actually a really cool little series. It was only two seasons long. Uh, you can find it right now on Amazon Prime. That's the only place you can find it. Uh, it was originally, I think, done for uh, Vimeo. Uh, so the cool thing about it is that there's only 25 episodes. Most of the episodes are 10 uh, to 13 minutes long. And uh, there's like a handful, I think like four or five of the 25 that are 18 minutes long. So there, there, there's some really cool quick hitters. So the premise of it is that uh, Alan Tudyk, who's an amazing actor, um, I, right now he's on sci-fi with Resident Alien. Um, but he was also, uh, if you guys remember back in the 90s, or was it late 90s, early 2000s, anyway, Firefly. Um, he was on Firefly with Nathan Fillion and Summer Glau and you know all those, all those cool guys. Um, and if you remember the premise, uh, Firefly, you know, it was like the Western set in space. It was, you know, kind of kind of different for that time period. And I don't think a lot of people understood it and got it, except for now it's like this huge cult classic. It was canceled after one season. So the premise of Con Man is kind of loosely based off of Tudyk's life. He plays this guy, uh, Ray Nearly, uh, who goes around from Comic-Con to Comic-Con to Comic-Con trying to keep his sci-fi career alive that is like stagnant and dead. And the only way he's making money is by 
you know, signing autographs and, and doing all these things. But it, the, the, um, the cast list on this show is amazing. Uh, it's a, it's a who's who of cameos. Uh, Nathan Fillion has, is in for a bunch of episodes. Sean Astin's in for three or four. Lou Ferrigno's in it uh, in a couple different spots. Um, uh, you know, like I said, Summer Glau's in it. Uh, Felicia Day's in it. Uh, Amy Ackner. Uh, a whole bunch of people. It's, it's just, you know, uh, even uh, Stan Lee has a cameo in it as well. Uh, so, I mean, there's a whole lot going on in these little 10-minute episodes. Um but one of my one of my favorite episodes actually has to do with uh, Leslie Jordan, if you know who that is. Uh, the little, the little, is it, is it Leslie Jordan? Oh goodness, what's his name now? I can't remember. Um, anyway, he's a um, a little guy. He's not a. Yeah, it is Leslie Jordan. Okay, um, but yeah, so he plays he plays you know um, a gay man in a lot of in a lot of his shows because I, I believe he is gay in real life. Uh, but in this show, he he's in, in con man. He makes it like that's his con. He's like that's how I get the that's how I get the ladies. I make them think I'm gay, and then I convert. They, they get to, a chance to convert me. Uh, and there were parts of his episode and what he was doing where I was like wiping away tears from laughter. I I can't remember the last show that I watched where I laughed out loud this many times, especially for little ten minute episodes. So. Um, you know, kind of the great thing about it is that it follows him through as he's trying to resurrect his career. So he goes and does like voice acting. Uh, he tries that and he sucks at it. And he tries to go do like uh, off Broadway stuff, but then he finds out it's not actually off Broadway. It's actually in LA and across the street from the <laughs> Staples Center and this little back alley <laughs> theater. It's really off Broadway. Yeah, really, really off Broadway. Um, and anyway, so it, it, it's. You know, and the whole thing, he's trying to do something that's not sci-fi. And just like in real life, how after Firefly was canceled, there was the movie Serenity, which was the continuation of, of Firefly. So in, in the TV show, uh, all the, the original cast of their, their show, which they called Spectrum, which is funny because they keep going back and referencing Firefly throughout the whole thing. They, they usually use the name. They talk about Firefly. Um, how their show is way better than that other show, Firefly. Uh, <laughs> so it's a lot. It's a lot of uh, tongue-in-cheek comedy. There's some slapstick comedy in it. Um, there's some some levels of raunchy comedy in it. it. It's it's very well written, very well done. Nathan Fillion and and Alan Tudyk did a lot of the writing. Uh, so it's 25 episodes. You can watch m probably all of it in a day if you really wanted to. Uh, I took the better part of three days and just I'd watch a little bit here, watch a little bit there. Cause like I said, they're quick hitters. You could watch a, a 10 to 13 minute episode, yeah. you know, I mean, shoot, take your phone into the bathroom while you're taking a crap. You'll, you'll get an episode in. You <laughs> no know? one does that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that but, sounds sanitary. Hey Tim, did, um, did they end it or did it end? They ended it. Um, so uh, yeah, at the end of the, ep at the end, I can't tell you what happens at the end, but I will tell no, you. you don't, they, tell, don't tell us. No, but they but they ended up nicely, and 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 uh, how Ray is is going to do something, because yeah, so. Hmm. And nice. and I I decided to watch this because so on our show, Funny Science Fiction, we had our live episode on on Monday night, and one of our guests, which actually happens to be Casey Plot suggested it suggested hey i think it was casey it was either casey or jason they were both on the same time uh jason taylor from three geeks um one of them suggested and i don't remember who it was i want to say that it was casey but i like i was told earlier i'm i'm wrong um <laughs> don't be wronger i yeah. couldn't be wronger exactly that's going to come back up i'm sure but uh but yeah so they brought it up and i'm like oh i gotta watch this so interesting yeah, I want to watch. I want to watch it because I love him, and he was he was also the droid in Rogue One. Yeah, K two S O. Yeah, I was gonna say K two S O, but I didn't want to. <laughs> you want this sound? I didn't want yeah, to. I didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Also, was, the, was, also was, the chicken in Moana. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Hey hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but, you know the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I love hey hey. He was in. He's. Been I was in, gonna say hey hey, but I didn't want to think I was a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody Actually, would think any of us are. Are you kidding me? Has anyone seen uh, his new one, the Resident Alien one? No. 
I have not watched it yet. I, I am planning on it. It's one of my things I'm going to sit down and binge here shortly. He, he is they the just, bad guy on uh, Doom Patrol also. Yeah, yeah. he's Mr. Anybody Nobody. Doom Patrol? Yeah. yeah, they just got uh, uh, Resident Alien just got approved for a second season, so that's good news. Hmm. Yeah, he was uh, Pastor Veal in Arrested Development. Mm-hmm. Right, he's been, and, Alan, oh. been, like, been a ton of stuff. Ex, yeah, he's been, ex father. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. been he's he's in everything. He's in everything. Yeah. But um, yeah, he's he actually did a he was in I I Carly. <laughs> that's a lie. Well, now I hate him, so that's it. Got to go. And done. That Alan Tudyk's out. And scene. <laughs> but, you know, he's like Firefly is one of those things where they find they made a movie, then the movie didn't do well. You know, what I mean, like everyone asked for it, but it did have that one. The one woman who was in uh, Homeland and then V. I like her. She was yeah. in, in Firefly. She's in Firefly, too. Uh, the, well, the movie... And like, Deadpool. The movie was so different than the show, though. The Marina show was McCurry? like a Western, and this was a sci-fi karate movie. Yeah, so up, it was yeah. was way different than the show. I, I like them both. Uh, I like the show better, though. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I forgot to... I'm sorry. I forgot to put that up. We are discussing... <laughs> we discussed... We no, uh, yeah, so right. I strongly suggest if you if you like Firefly, if you like uh if you like Firefly or Serenity, if you like any of those actors uh and the stuff that they did, I think okay. it's a great little show to watch and I think it's well worth the time. And I'm actually really glad that that I stumbled upon it. Um I think it's funny though for me, uh, because Will Wheaton's wife hates me, uh, that and there's a story there. Uh <laughs> I, but Will Wheaton had, you know. Uh, Will Wheaton's in this as well, and like I think three episodes, so it's kind of okay. funny. All right, next up is uh, Sal, who's uh, incognito oh, yeah. in a Golden Corral parking <laughs> lot. <laughs> I'm waiting uh, for somebody to come up to his window and like hang yeah. something on him. Like keep, he's at Sonic. What? what, what is your, I don't even know. I don't even know okay, why, well, we are talking about the movie that Zach Wiseman called "Movie of the Century," best movie <laughs> ever. Thunder Force, the latest <laughs> by Melissa McCarthy and her husband, and it's now on Netflix. Take it away, Sal. Spill. All right, yeah, and I'm interested to hear what uh, Zach has to say. Just from his tone of his voice, I think we're going to be on the same page on this one. But uh, basically, uh, it's called Thunder Force. It's a superhero comedy film. It's on Netflix. It just came out in April. Like Jeff said, it stars Melissa McCarthy is the big star, the director was Ben Falcone, who is her husband, and it also stars Octavia Spencer. I cannot say her name without thinking of Activia. You know the the <laughs> you know what I'm talking about the, the yogurt, the, the, the yogurt. Yeah, so I'm going to call her Activia. If you guys don't mind. And uh, it also has two of my favorite actors in it: Bobby Cannavale and also Justin Bateman. And I'll tell you about their characters in a second. But basically, the uh, the movie t- takes place in Chicago. Does Melissa McCarthy take place in Chicago and everything she does? I don't know what it is with that, but she's always from Chicago and everything she does. And uh, anyway, she's from Chicago. Her and Octavia Spencer are uh, childhood friends. Octavia's parents are like these hot, hot shot physicians, and they're trying to uh, develop uh, superhuman uh, or superhero strengths for regular people to fight off off criminals that have become superheroes well they they uh end up killing octavia's parents when she was a little girl and she vows to get really really smart and start her own uh you know company to to develop this superhero powers and uh her and melissa mccarthy are childhood friends and then they get in a fight in college and they just go off on each other's lives and then there's like a 30-year reunion and Melissa McCarthy wants uh, to invite Octavia to the reunion because she knows she's uh, doesn't like going to things alone. And um, anyway, <laughs> they they reunite, and uh, she sees that she's a, a big time physician now, and she's following in her parents' footsteps. Has this huge company with this huge building, and she's developing this superhero um, thing. And and Melissa McCarthy's just kind of screwing around in the uh, in the lab, and she kind of accidentally. Uh, is the um, is the protege for this thing is and they got to start training and anyway as you can tell they be but they both become superheroes and they both start fighting crime in Chicago and Bobby Cannavale is uh, kind of like the bad mayor of Chicago or he's running for mayor 
and uh, he's great in it. And then Justin Bateman is kind of one of the bad guys as well, but he got in a accident on his honeymoon when he was in Mexico and he went like snorkeling in a, in a radioactive lake or something. So he's got crab arms throughout the whole movie. It's hysterical. <laughs> and uh, he's great. I mean, that guy could just do a Doritos commercial and, and win an award. I mean, he's just so good. Bobby Cannavale is good. Uh, but here's where I'm going to get a little negative. I thought the, um, I thought the, just the humor in it. I've heard before Melissa McCarthy's playing the same character. She always plays. I didn't think her on screen, uh, uh, chemistry with Octavia was very, was very good. I just, I don't know why she had a better, uh, she had better on screen stuff with, uh, Octavia's daughter. I don't know who where her name is, but I thought they, they did really well with each other, but I thought the scenes with her and Octavia were just, I don't know, man. They just felt flat to me. I'm not a superhero guy. I know you guys are on here. I know this was a comedy. It wasn't a real superhero <laughs> movie. But it had some moments. It had some good some good jokes in it. I'm not going to lie. It had some good jokes where I laughed. Uh, like Tim was saying earlier, I wasn't laughing out loud. I wasn't laughing hard throughout the whole movie. I enjoyed it, but I, di I, don't, I, I didn't really love it too much. I don't know. I, I'm probably going to give it three tomatoes. I know Jeff doesn't have three tomatoes. Sorry, three. Stars, but I'm going to give it three. Three tomato sauce jars, but I might add a tomato sauce jar just because of Bobby Cannavale and Jason Bateman. So I'll probably give it a four. That's my take on it. I'd love to hear what Zach. Zach's a, a big movie, uh, boot, you know, obviously the Netflix metrics guy. And I can't believe it was number one. I think it was number one because everybody watched it. It came out. Melissa McCarthy's great. I love her in a lot of things, but I just... I fell flat on this one, man. That's me. So I, 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 I recommend it because of Bobby Cannavale and Jason Bateman, but I don't recommend it for Melissa McCarthy. That's my take on it, man. Zach, what do you think? Yeah, I actually agree with almost everything you said. I felt that every time <laughs> Melissa McCarthy and Octavia, like it just felt like it, they were in two almost different movies. But the yep. thing that I did like about it, it was entertaining. Uh, it was cute. Uh, the thing I did like about it, a movie that has Melissa McCartney and Octavia Spencer in it, uh, the things that they did not ever mention was race, size, or sex. And I thought that was so good because I was honestly waiting for these punchlines to come and they never came. So the fact that yep. they were uh, these, like physically these actors nice. was never a joke, was never a part of it. it, it they could have been done by two men. Uh, so that that was very refreshing because I honestly, I was like, oh, here we go. Here's some fat jokes or here's some women jokes. Um, <laughs> no. There was, uh, right, you're right, right. Jason, Jason Bateman was absolutely perfect with the crab claws. Uh, so funny. Uh, them eating raw chicken was one of the weirdest, grossest, funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> um, but you're, you're right. The daughter was probably the best role. Uh, the king was a great character. And uh, all in all, it w yeah, I would also give it three uh, tomato cans. Yeah, I think it's fair. Jars, <laughs> Jar Zach. You know, right. Zach, sorry, sorry. You, make, you make a really good point about that I never really thought about about Melissa McCarthy. You know, one of my favorite movies of the last five six years was The Heat, mm -hmm. which I think would, was hysterical. And and thinking about it now, Melissa McCarthy was the quote unquote cool of the buddy cop, and Sandra Bullock was the dorky DC yeah. sidekick almost and and that is a uh, pretty good and then spy also she was you know i think that's a i really like spy I, yeah, like I, I think spy yeah. i think spy is a great movie uh which by the way bobby cannavale in spy uh speaking of which sal, sal if you didn't see it unfortunately only one season but bobby cannavale to the nth degree vinyl which is still strong oh yeah no i saw i, I, I watched back. it no, I, yeah i saw that it was great not only Bobby Cannavale, but Olivia Wilde and uh, Andrew Dice Clay in in another dramatic role where he kills it. <laughs> I, I'm music. so bummed they didn't do vinyl. I can't believe yeah. they didn't renew vinyl or try to do uh, that more. I don't the music in that show was insane. The insane. Loved it. All right, so I guess I guess it's so it sounds like it's one of those. If you got nothing better to do, watch it. You won't hate yourself for it. Yeah, but if you never watch Definitely. it. Definitely, yeah. it's on Netflix, so you've are, you're already paying for Netflix, so definitely watch it. I like I I wouldn't go to the movies and pay twelve bucks and have six dollar popcorn and three dollar sodas for that movie, but I'd watch it on Netflix in my in my place. I mean, so I, I highly recommend it if you got Netflix. Obviously, I guess I should have yeah. went that route with it, but like like Zach said, it's it's a cute movie. It's 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 well done. It was well shot. There's some good action shots in it, but I it 
just their chemistry, like Zach said, I just didn't I didn't like it. Just didn't didn't do well, it. Well, you me. you convince Casey Ryan plot. So I, I, I think that's... Melissa McCarthy is price of admission worthy. I mean, I, I she makes me laugh just looking at her. So she, 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 she did Sean Spicer. Yeah. The, the Spicer only thing I re Scott. regretted when Classic. Sean Spicer left is that Melissa McCarthy wouldn't be doing him on Saturday Night Live anymore. And if all the, the, of all, God. all the famous people that did any of those characters, she was the best. At the very time, without <laughs> that. And, and her, her This Is 40 outtakes are nothing short of freaking brilliant. Loved her in Bridesmaids. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. Bridesmaids, she, she, was, she was classic in Bridesmaids. Like, that movie's perfect yeah love that movie yeah. Speaking i'll probably of, go watch that just because of uh just because of jason bateman i love bateman jason bateman's oh, fantastic man, so jason bateman yeah. is so good. freaking amazing i, I like that you watched watch bridesmaids for jason bateman <laughs> no i was uh, i meant that i was gonna watch <laughs> no, uh, thunder just force kidding. just kidding. all right speaking of force if keeping uh, with uh or thunder, yeah the golden hour yeah keeping so, with uh so as uh, so as obviously we've mentioned before, I'm a huge fan of sports documentaries. Is this a Rosner rant? No, 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 not yet. But okay. It's coming. It's okay. coming. Give me one sec. Okay. Uh, I'm a huge fan of sports documentaries. Um, I also like look. It's is it a great uh, life changing movie? No, but Days of Thunder is so quotable in everyday life that. You know, people utilize lines like rubbing his race to, um, constantly. And I, I think it is part of um, it's it's become part of pop culture beyond uh, just the movie. Um, and and I love making of of movies that have that kind of um, charm and memorability. I, I love I, I don't think there's enough making of, especially when it's an interesting story. This is the roster's rant, how, though. As much as I love Days of Thunder, it was it dawned on me as I was re-watching this what Tom Cruise foisted on the American public in the late 80s, early mid eight to eighties to early nineties, which is he did the same exact movie four or five times. All he did was change the occupation. Cocktail, <laughs> all the right moves, Top Gun, Days of Thunder, simple. Young hot shot, sparks a big leap in his career, yes. has a great moment, meets a girl, has a great relationship, then has horrible moment, friend gets in trouble or dies, has low points, redemption at end of movie. Now, granted, that's a lot of American movies, <laughs> I realize. But Tom Cruise did it exactly the same. Like, yeah, he I did like formulas. Formulas work. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so this is the making of Days of Thunder, and uh, it's it's on Fox Sports. Uh, you can also find it on YouTube. It's really quick. This is a documentary that's not overly long. It hits everything you need to know, and it's 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 amazing for a bunch of reasons. First of all, where the idea. That Tom Cruise, it was all Tom Cruise's idea to do Days of Thunder. And where it came from was uh cocktail? No, no. When he was shooting, when he was shooting Color of Money with Paul Newman, um, for those that don't know, Paul Newman was a big race car driver, really good driver, and a, a racing team owner. So he and Paul Newman would drive sports cars together. Um, and uh they went during that, at one point in time, they were invited to uh, go to Daytona and and uh, see NASCAR's run. And uh, they actually let him get out and drive. Rick Hendrick, who's team owner, uh, still to this day, um, was Rick. Rick uh, was Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson's team owner. Um, they let. Tom Cruise drive the car and he was hooked and he went to Jerry Bruckheimer and said, we have to make a NASCAR movie. And uh, they said, you know, well, let's find a writer. And they found a writer uh, who did a great screenplay. And uh, then they had to convince the folks from NASCAR uh, to do it um, because there had been NASCAR movies done before, but they were stroker ace and movies like that that uh didn't, you know, I, I know it's funny but it's not a good movie 
It's terrible. Um, a- anyways, they, they eventually sold it in. What, what I found really cool about it, again, having worked in NASCAR now for quite a while, was the level of detail that they had to go to make this movie the way they wanted to. They actually had created actual race cars, got actual race car drivers, mounted cameras in the car, but made the cars legal to where they could actually qualify them for a race and run camera cars as part of the actual entered field in a race, not just cars that were out there running slow filming stuff. They had those two during pace laps, but they actually had race cars that they were, if you look back at the history of the race, those were entered cars in the race, in the running order, which is amazing. I think it's just great. Um, they get into a lot. The movie was, Days of Thunder was directed by Tony Scott, who directed Top Gun. And uh, his wife is also interviewed throughout this and talks a lot about his creative process. Um, he was an artist by trade as well. It, it's really a quick watch. If you like Days of Thunder, find it at all memorable. I think it's a really fun little making of, and uh, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, immensely, I give it uh, three jars of matzo ball soup. Oh, isn't, that where, isn't that where he met? Uh, isn't that where he met Nicole Kidman? Nicole Kidman. I was just going to say it that is, it is. That yeah. is Nicole Kidman at her absolute hottest. Okay, is, guys, uh, I don't want this to to slide by. Hang on one second. Um. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, well, it's yeah, there. Man. That was my uh, that was my uh, uh what you call it from uh, Lebowski. Big Lebowski. that was Halloween, that was a long yeah. time ago, yeah, 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 that was funny. Well, that was uh, my Walter Subject costume from uh, uh, Big Lebowski, but uh, yeah, it's it's a really good movie. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you forget uh, Carrie Ellis was, was in it. Um, right. And uh, as was Michael Rooker, uh, Michael Rooker gets asked about it, and he says, uh, "I have no idea how I got this movie. Um, I I suck at auditions, and I had to audition for it. And uh, somehow or another, they loved me um, and loved him for the character Rowdy Burns. Um, and the other, th- there's another story they tell that's pretty amazing, which is um, when Cruz drove for the drove the car. He drove Jeff Bodine's car who was you know racer for a long time and rick hendrick owned that car and then after he ran they went across the street to the olive garden which is across the street from daytona it's still there and uh they sat down and got drunk and shot the shit and jeff bodine and rick hendrick started telling stories real shit that happened and the stories it it was the stories that are in the movie days of thunder um the rental car scene was based on a true story. Um, the wheelchair thing was, you know, based on something that had happened. Um, the dressing, the uh, the stripper up as a policewoman uh, to surprise him after a win, like that. Those were all stories that they told drunk at the Olive Garden, and they all became part of the script, which is which is awesome. I love that they were all based in reality. So yeah, if you like the movie, I I recommend it immensely. So if you hate Tom Cruise and you think he's a putz, does the documentary still hold up? Yeah, I mean, I don't like. I'm not a big fan of Tom Cruise, and I do think he's a putz. But he, he's a. I love his movies. I have to admit. Casey Ryan Plot is convinced. Congratulations, Jerry says great show, guys. I agree, great show, everybody. I I like Tom Cruise. I um, I can't turn the channel fast enough if he comes on. Well, it, it depends. You know, so a lot of his movies, I think, are really good. Um, no. what's, the, what's the one where it's the Spielberg one where the, the War of the Worlds? Yeah, the, War of the Worlds. Not War of the Worlds. That one was, uh, I didn't love War of the Worlds, actually. Um, Minority that one Report? Really was, wasn't realistic. <laughs> was it Minority Report? Yes, Minority Report. Way more Love. realistic one. Well, yeah. what wasn't realistic to me about the future, my, the future about, series. about the uh, War of the Worlds was at the end where, like, all his family was fine. It just didn't, you know, I mean, it just. What do you mean where the Martians came in? That was the realistic part? That was, that was fine. Watch I that, that, God damn. That, that, I mean, you're supposed to suspend your disbelief, right? So I could I could accept that. I couldn't accept the fact that I, his no. entire family ended up okay at his house. Did, did anybody see him jump out of an airplane with James Corden last year? No. 
him in Tropic Thunder. Yeah, this is what Jerry just put in Tropic Thunder. That character <laughs> is the greatest character. What is this, uh, Goodman oh, or whatever? On. Okay, I will agree Le with Jerry. Legend. I concede. He, I concede. He's, and am he's amazing in A Few Good Men. He's amazing yep. in Rain Man. He's Don't amazing. Legend. legend. He's amazing in Color of Money. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he's, you know. He's good. He's great. He's I like all the Mission Impossible movies. Are, are Mission fun. Impossible movies are fun. Yeah, that's, the Mission like, Impossible. Except, and like what he, the what what he did with Mission Impossible, I always thought was brilliant. Like bringing in different directors every time and stylistically making each one of those movies different, I thought was a, a brilliant move. I thought all it was right. awesome and lost in translation. Hey, real quick, if I can add, because we probably won't. He was get great to in Godfather because, too. Because it's a movie, <laughs> I watched again this week. What and I know I've talked with Ron about this, and uh, Ron's cousin Dan, a mutual friend of all of of ours, um, backs me up. I firmly believe one of the funniest movies of the past five years, maybe more now, uh, Pop Star with Andy Samberg, is absolutely one of the funniest movies, and I cannot get enough of that. Uh, so that's my that's my right. Roswell. Let's go bonus. deep on that. To me, the hidden mo movie that to me is one of the funniest is the other guys oh, with Will, with no Will question. Ferrell. I love love, no other guys. love them. I can watch that movie over and over again. All right, say good night, Rosner. Good Whose night, birthday Rosner. was just the other day. Everyone say happy birthday now. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. Thank, you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Peace out, Sam. Say good night. Good night, all. Have a good one. Thanks for having me on. This was a lot of fun. Thanks, Thanks for being here, Tammy. <laughs> Ron. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. Sal. Actually, don't. Zach. <laughs> 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 Happy birthday, what? Howard. Love the, love the shirt. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And I'm Jeff Tawaska. And thank you again for joining us for Crossing the Streams. We can't thank you enough for joining us week after week. It's it's incredible. We'll see you next week, 9.30 p.m. Night, Eastern, everybody. every Wednesday. Bye, Thank you for Take joining care, us guys. for this episode of Crossing the Streams, brought to you by CSnobs.com and part of the Jeff Dewaskin Show. Your hosts, of course, Jeff Dewaskin, Sal D'Amelio, Bob Phillips, Ron Lippett, and Howard Shit. Rosner. Follow us all on the socials, and we'll see you next week and every Wednesday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Mark your calendars. We're going live and crossing more streams.